Hello, I'm Kelly Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. For the past few days, my dad, Kenneth Copeland, has been laying out the foundation so that we could understand our covenant with God, understand what it is that we stand on, that firm ground. And today he shares from the word what to do when a contradiction to that word challenges something that your covenant has promised you. And when we get this, we are able to live in victory. It doesn't mean things don't come, doesn't mean hard times and challenges don't come, but when we grasp that we have a savior and he's made us promises, and we can stand on those, then our life changes. You can be encouraged and get ready for this message that'll change your life with Kenneth Copeland. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Praise God. Hebrews chapter six. Oh, I'll tell you what. I get over into the book of Hebrews. Oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a rich, rich, rich book. Hebrews chapter six. Now we're talking about becoming fully, fully, completely, absolutely, fully persuaded. No wondering about it. I mean, you get to where you just know it like you know two plus two is four. Glory to God. I mean, it's just the way it is. From now on, I mean, that, 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 that's just it. Verse 12, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now we know what he's referring to and talking about when he talks about promises. He's talking about covenant sworn oath of God. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, surely blessing I will bless thee, multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater with an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. An oath, a covenant promise, a blood sworn oath is the end of the argument. Blood is involved here. The argument's over. We're Western-minded people. Covenants are just something neighborhoods make. Well, you can't have, your house can't have wooden shingles out there. No, we're talking about blood here. Blood agreements. Blood of animals in the first and the blood of God in the second. Verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, the immutability or the unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. I have written in my, my Bible, confirmed it by a blood sworn oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. A, one translation says a strong inner strength. Fully persuaded, right? Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the mind, the will, and the emotions. That's where the questions occur, is in the mind. They must be renewed. 
both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil where the forerunner for us is entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, who was Melchizedek? No, it wasn't. It was not Jesus. Noah had three sons. You know their names? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham and Japheth. And God said the same thing to them that he said to Adam. He pronounced exactly the same blessing that he did to Adam in the garden. Ham and Japheth did exactly the same thing that Adam did. They just blew it off and went on their own way and really caused a lot of trouble. But Shem didn't. Shem, according to Jewish records, was Melchizedek. Now you have to remember, there's only something like 10 generations between Abraham and Adam. Huh? Oh, that stuff really starts getting good, doesn't it? When, when, you, when you, you, you do some studying, study the Chumash, and, and, and you learn these things in the Chumash. Well, anyway, so he, he blessed Abram after the slaughter of the kings. Now, when, you know, old Chad came down there, he and two other kings, I mean, the, the largest military expeditionary force of the time. But he tied into a covenant man. Didn't work. Abram armed 318 men out of his own household. Three hundred and eighteen men. And the blessing of the Lord taught them tactics. Night tactics. Nobody had fought at night. Remember the army slogan, we own the night. Well, that started a long time before the U.S. Army. It started with Abram and his household. They owned the night. And I mean, they took care of business. They kicked the slats out of that bunch. I mean, they ripped into them. And listen to what Abram said. I mean, they're dividing up the spoils and, and you know, there, there's one knothead. <laughs> he came up and said, uh, 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 you, 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 you keep all the, you keep all the goods. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll take the people. <laughs> Abram said, no, I don't want any of it. Never let it be said. Any man made Abram rich. One translation said, no man had made Abram rich, but almighty God. Hallelujah. El Shaddai yeah. made him rich. Amen. Are you listening to me? He's a covenant man. Here came Shem. What did he have in his hands? the blood, the wine, and the body, the bread. See, covenant has not changed. It just changed bloods. He came with the elements of covenant. Blessed be Abram 
of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. He was not calling God possessor of heaven and earth. He's calling Abram of God covenant with the possessor of heaven and earth. And since he's God's very covenant brother, then he also is possessor of heaven and earth. Search it out. You come over and you, you see it in the book of Romans. How did he become it? Because of faith. Heir of the world. Because of faith. Covenant faith. Fully persuaded. If God said, take 300 men and go down there and do business, they intended to do that. Amen. And they, that's the kind of war where you don't lose anybody. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you know, Brother Copeland, how it is. You win a few, lose a few. Not if you play the game right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Particularly mm -hmm. when it's our bat and our ball and our father is the umpire. We're going to win this game. <laughs> we don't play nine inning games. We play till we win. You understand that? Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're there. Now listen to me. Go with me now to the 15th chapter of Genesis. Oh, Jesus. Now we've been reading from the 17th chapter of Genesis. But now go back to the 15th chapter. And you can see now why Genesis 17 was so monumental in Abram immediately becoming Abraham. Why this, this, this whole arrangement was so marvelous and wonderful in his heart and in his mind. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, fear not Abram, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me seeing I go childless and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels or out of thine own body shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou shalt be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Now you know what he's talking about when he went into Romans and said, thou so shall thy seed be. Now he has a base record. He has a, 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 a something with which to refer to which to refer. He's got a base now. Stars. Oh. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He believed in the Lord. Now, he did not believe in the Lord. Go back to Romans 
chapter four. Right where we were, it does not say, let the Bible interpret itself. Amen. Romans chapter four, verse three. For what saith the scripture, Abraham, it doesn't say Abraham believed in God. No, it said Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So he believed him. He said, look at the stars. It's impossible, but he believed it. He can't have children, but he believed it because his wife is barren, but he believed it. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old, a she goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. He took unto him all these and divided them in the midst. Now that means this is the ancient way of cutting the Hebrew covenant. And it became the way of covenant in, in, in many, many peoples thereafter. They divide, they cut it down the spine all the way dropped the two halves, creating with the different animals end to end, let me do it this way, creating just room enough to walk in that blood. Now, Look at it again. A heifer three years old, a she goat three years old, a ram three years old. Three animals creating a blood walkway. Now, the ancient way of walking in that blood was to walk. a figure eight, which is today a figure eight on its side is the sign of infinity. This covenant is forever. God said a thousand generations. It's shouting time in the household. He took unto him all these, divided them in the midst, laid each piece one against the other, another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now, when you're believing God and you're standing and you're saying, I have a covenant with God and here comes the devil. Ah, you don't think you're going to get anything. I'll tell you, the fowler is there. Run him out. Stand guard over that covenant blood. God's not going to run him off. The almighty God does not have authority in the earth to do anything about the devil. He's already done something about the devil. A man defeated him in hell itself and took his keys away from him and brought him to naught. Oh, God, get the devil off of him. The apostle Paul tried that three different times. It didn't work. He said, my grace is sufficient. You get him off. I taught you the authority of the believer. Now you get him off. 
And he did. Later he said, I've been delivered from all these things. So now let's continue with it. When the sun was coming down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Stop right there. (laughs) Now Isaac was born. He said he considered not his body now dead. Isaac was born at a hundred years old. He considered not his body now dead, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, but only the covenant, not the contradiction. Now listen to this. The sun was going down. A deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo, a horror and darkness. Come down to the 15th verse. Thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age at 175. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, look, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp, a lamp of fire that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, under thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt under the great river, the river Euphrates. I am totally, absolutely convinced because of what it says in Hebrews, because of what it says in the book of Romans, he was completely, totally persuaded, completely persuaded And and this is when that persuasion began. Glory to God. I am I'm totally convinced while he is watching. A burning. Does that remind you of a pillar of fire by day and a pillar of cloud or smoke? I mean, fire at night and that pillar of cloud, the pillar of smoke. It's called cloud in some places, it's called smoke in others. It's the glory. It's the glory. It's the glory. And I'm completely convinced he saw God's footprints in that blood. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.